This is an open letter to Joshua B. Joshua is an 8th grade student in California. Last year he was suspended from school for his actions which resulted in a fellow student receiving a broken arm. A quote from the school's report to Joshua's parents states. Just prior to the start of third period on, date removed, Mr. Teacher overheard Joshua yelling profanities at two other students. They were picking up the pieces of their joint science project which Joshua had knocked to the ground and broken. The project was a homemade telescope the students had built from a kit valuing nearly $100. He was then quoted as saying if you want to see fake planets, just look at this, at which time he threw the classroom globe at the two students. This action was observed by Mr. Teacher. The globe Joshua threw was rather large with a metal stand and a heavy base. The globe just missed boy student but struck girl student on her left shoulder as she was diving out of the way. The impact of the globe knocked her off balance while she attempted to avoid being hit. This caused her to fall over three riding chairs. The impact of the globe and the resulting fall over the chairs caused one of the chairs to topple and land on girl student's arm breaking the radius bone in her left arm. The report went on to explain the legal actions against Joshua's parents as well as Joshua's suspension from school. In all, Joshua was suspended for a month, kicked out of two school activities and his parents received fines which included the students' medical bills, the cost of the telescope project kit and damage to school property. Not to mention he was also held back from attending his first year of high school because he had to repeat 8th grade. Joshua's parents wrote me via Google Plus, because of Joshua's explanation to his parents and school faculty. He clearly stated that I was the primary catalyst to his outburst. First let me tell you a little about me and how I got started on this. In late 2013 I started a YouTube channel which primarily focused on vague conspiracy theories and flat earth. None of the videos I have created reflect experimental fact. I was amazed at how well my first two videos were received. I was really sure that my videos were being enjoyed as entertainment. Later I was introduced to the monetization function in YouTube and my videos were making actual money. This was amazing for me because I was not exactly rolling in money at the time. Up to this point, I saw no harm in what I was doing. I was of the opinion that people can believe what they want. Soon. I had 100 subscribers. Then 200. It seemed to peak at about 350. But that puzzled me because I thought I was making far better points than others on the same subject. This was so easy for me. Primarily because of my profession. I am a retired science teacher. I taught 9th and 10th grade science in a public school for 24 years. Students in my classes had the highest average grades in the state. Not something that makes it to the news, but I was really proud of that. Given my background, coming up with material for flat earth videos was very simple. As an educator, it's incredible how many great questions students have. Especially in science. Many students, while figuring out the world around them, have some really interesting conclusions. Some were even quite well thought out and pretty compelling. I used to let them discover the answers to their own questions for themselves. And those discoveries could be submitted as one of three major tests in the school year. I remembered those questions. I used the better, untested, conclusions which the students gave. That is where my material came from. That is when I was approached by another Flat Earth video producer. It was an invitation to a flat earth discussion group. I promptly declined as I did not want to get involved with the handful of folks who seemed to actually believe in the flat earth for religious reasons. As religion was the primary source of the flat earth discussion. He wrote again a few days later. I thought it over and said to myself, I think I could tolerate their ramblings to make a few bucks more. So I replied to him again, but this time with my acceptance. This lead to a rather long email conversation between he and I which spanned about a dozen messages. Many weird questions. The last of the email chain included a rather poorly written non-disclosure agreement. If you have never heard of that, it's a contract to keep a secret. 
Sometimes when you go to the performance of a professional magic show, you have to sign one in case you see something which reveals how a trick was performed. The non-disclosure agreement says you are not allowed to tell anyone or you could get in legal trouble. I know that those who I was partnered with in that group will watch this. Right now I am really glad that three of you decided not to listen to me last year about rewriting the agreement. I am now going to explain to you why I have decided to quit the Flat Earth Movement. Joshua I have over 125 YouTube accounts and more than 50 Google Plus accounts. Most of those in the group have far more than that. The videos I made. They are all false. They are all lies. You can see this because even though I make claims that proven scientific facts are false, I provide no competing arguments or proof of my own. I only say that science is wrong. Much of the material from those in the group was written or at least introduced by me in our online forum. The members of my group loved my material. They also enjoyed the fact that as a science teacher, I was prepared for all of what the facts were, so I knew how to deflect them. After a while I became more of a writer for the group than a producer. As a result, I received a portion of the money earned by my material. Once my writer position was established in the group. It was embarrassing what happened next. The individual greed of the members was incredible. They would snatch up my provided concepts almost as fast as I could write them, and it was almost like a race to get the videos out so they could cash in on the material. Almost like it was breaking news. But I didn't care what they did with it, just as long as I profited from it. When I put out a concept, we originally agreed that we'd vote to see who put out what. But money is a powerful influence and often when I woke up the next morning, there were about 10 videos made on my concept. Each with a few hundred views. Concepts which I wrote included. Doppler effect on a spinning globe, would prevent us hearing each other. Sunlight under the clouds not possible due to the earth being in the way. Position of the moon during the go-fast rocket launch. Flat Earth mentioned in a NASA aircraft design document. Jet engines on the space shuttle. Daytime moon. And many others. Now I was making money, and didn't have to make any new videos. You might think that there must be some legitimacy to the claims because of how many subscribers those in our group have. As well as how many views and likes the videos get. Well, let me tell you about that. As I said before, I alone have a total of nearly 200 accounts. Those in the group have many more than I. Some have many times more than what I have. You will notice those accounts as the ones with basically no published materials and low subscriber counts. Some in our group actually use the YouTube and Google privacy settings to hide this information. We use these accessory accounts for giving members likes and subscribers, as well as high view counts. This draws fictitious interest in the videos, and we make money. Some of the accounts we use to give likes and subscribers to those who are disproving our material. Because this increases their motivation to produce real results. Which in turn draws interest in our videos, and we make money. A few of the accounts I use to bully other users. Try to aggravate them and get them to make videos with real factual results or even disputes. Which in turn draws interest in our videos, and we make money. You can also see this use of accessory accounts when you come across a video which seems to have an enormous following, but yet, the author only has the one video. And the video is not all that incredible. Our non-disclosure agreement says that I cannot disclose the real names of those in my group. Only the individual can do that with themselves. However, I told you guys to add this. It does not say that a group participant cannot disclose the YouTube or Google Plus user names of group members, past or present. Because you thought it would hurt your image new public group. Names like Jeronism, Mr. Thrive and Survive, Captain Obvious, Stinky Cash, Antonio Subarats, Dearth, Patricia Steele, We Are All Inventions, Nathan Oakley, Max Malone, Eric Dubé, Mark Sargent, PK Truth, the Morgel, Russian Vids, Odd TV, Red Silver J, 
CAESAR as well as all those regularly featured on Globebusters. Those are just some of the names you have seen from our group. Some other popular names were a part of the group at one time or another. I would love to tell you the names of their accessory accounts. Yes, we have a list that takes up a rather large section of the forum. But my wife's lawyer stated that that would be the same as counting the accessory accounts forbidden by item 8. I want you to know, there are really not as many actual flat earthers as you think. It's why you only see about 20 folks doing or participating in live hangouts. Because that's all there are. Sure, many have caught on to the money making. Others enjoy using the flat earth title to spread other messages such as religion or their lack of trust in the government. But the impact of those outside the group is minimal. But ultimately, those who actually believe the earth is flat, tend to only discuss this in person with those who are like-minded. Those who promote it on social media and platforms such as YouTube, only do so because YouTube allows an author to make money with the video. Group members make money with ads, fan funding, soliciting their revenue generating websites and other platforms. Some request money as donations, and even as funding for experiments which do not happen, equipment and even activism, which never takes place. The Group Forum Item 2 of the Non-Disclosure Agreement states that I am not allowed to link or disclose the URL for the Group Forum, no name the owner of the domain. This is only authorized when a majority of the members agrees to invite a user. However it does not state that I cannot speak about its existence. The forum we use is a simple open source forum script which we use at no cost. The domain is owned by one of the members in the group and is actually a subdomain to his online store. Search engines such as Google, Yahoo, Bing, and others will not list the forum pages in any results. This is not because we are a super hidden IT savvy organization. It is simply because there is a tag you can add to the website scripting called no bots which search engines understand, causing the pages to be omitted from search engine results. This forum is where most of our interaction takes place. Although some members use other services such as Skype and Google Hangouts which never go public when talking about group activity. But now I am rambling on about other subjects. The reason I am leaving the false flat earth movement is not only the shock of how it affected you, but honestly, the completely cold response I received from the other group members when I shared your mother's message with them. Responses such as that's what she gets for not knowing how to raise her son, why should this concern me, and who cares. It was then that I thought of my students as well as my own children. No money is worth the corruption and harm of a child. I would like to invite you to go back and look at any of my videos. As well as any of the videos from those I mentioned above. Pay attention to what is being presented. You will find a buffet of claims against the factual spherical earth, you will notice something missing in all of the videos. The thing that is missing from all of the videos is actually experimental proof of anything supporting flat earth. Ask questions to the video authors and supporters. Ask them if they can provide any experiment regarding the video subject which conclusively results in any of the proposed flat earth models. You will receive any of the following answers. Insults such as troll, shill, or any number of profanities. Your account muted on that channel. Your comment deleted. Links to other videos by third party flat earth authors. Various other deflections. On YouTube, as well as in life. Anytime you cannot get a straight answer from someone who is selling you a claim, you should be wary of that which is being told to you. Someone who is truly producing evidence to you about something, will usually be open with giving as many direct answers as possible. Not one flat earth supporters or video authors will give you a straight answer which corresponds to reality or works in conjunction with any other claim they make. This video is for you Joshua. I wish to leave you with this closing thought. Science is a process to arrive at a fact or facts. Math is the most important tool in that process. Of course it is very seductive when those claiming conspiracies say ask questions. What most want you to hear in that is I have the answers. 
but what you personally need to understand is that when you ask a question and get an unpopular or unexpected answer, it's okay to require justification of the answer. And those who refuse to provide solid proof of their conclusions, are hiding the fact that they either don't have the answer or they don't want you to have the answer. Questions are never bad things, as long as you realize that asking a question means that you might not know, and should not expect what the answer is. I created this account for just this video. I have put ads on it so that I can provide the three items I promised your mother for you. For those watching this video, those three items are a Seals Tron Astro Phi Newtonian Telescope, a Skiris digital camera eyepiece and a year pass at the planetarium and observatory just 30 minutes away. I only wish to apologize for me. And I hope this will encourage you to think twice about believing what people from unaccredited sources try to convince you of. Mr. G.